Hi guys, Drew with Drew Talks. So today we're going to do a video on marriage and I'm really excited to do this one. I've been thinking about it for a while. Um, marriage is probably the best symbolism of friendship that the human race has ever had because um, that's kind of essentially what it is. When you're with your spouse, you're not only their lover, you're also their friend and you walk through life hand in hand. It really is an incredible union. Um, the first thing we're going to do is debunk the myth that 50% of marriages end in divorce. That is not true. And I've heard that said a lot, and I did a lot of research trying to find where the statistical evidence was to back that up, and it just doesn't exist. In fact, they think the reason that's become such a popular myth uh, they think it originated in the 1970s or something when some psychologists predicted, oh, eventually 50% of marriages in the United States are going to fail. Now that never happened. The worst the marriage rate ever, our divorce rate ever got was in the 1980s uh, when it dipped into the 40-ish percentages. But since then, it has not gotten that high, the divorce rate. And um, millennials actually have pretty good statistics on their marriages. They wait longer to get married. They're being more cautious who they marry. And it's probably because there have been enough divorces in our society where we can see uh, the long-term effects from divorce, which are not positive things. Um, and I'm not condemning everyone who gets divorced, obviously. Um, divorce happens. It just does. Um, but I do want to talk about marriage and um, how if you are able to make it work, I believe it is worth it in the long run. Um, so one thing that does concern me, because it is 2020, the experts are saying that because of the stress from everything that has happened this year, that we're going to see divorces skyrocket. And I hope that doesn't happen. Um, I pray that doesn't happen. And I hope that you guard your marriage and protect it with your life. Um, but what I wanna do in this video is address four areas that cause a lot of um, tension with couples and four areas you need to work on in your marriage and areas you need to address before you get married when you're picking your partner. These are all four areas that are known to lead to divorce. Now, I know a lot of people think that one of the leading causes of divorce is adultery, but you'd be surprised how often that isn't the case. And in fact, I believe that when people get to the point where they are committing adultery, which is a heinous act, when they get to that point, uh, they're already totally dissatisfied in their marriage. Um, they're kind of checked out from it. I don't think people who are fully engaged, working hard at their marriage, happy with their spouse, uh, seek lovers on the side. I think it's mostly people who are um, self-absorbed, they're heartbroken, they feel like something isn't getting fulfilled with them. I'm not justifying adultery. I'm saying that that is sometimes a symptom of a marriage that is over and uh, somebody has definitely left the union. So let's talk about the four areas that do cause a lot of tension with couples. And we all know what the big one is, finances. If you want your marriage to stay strong, you have got to communicate with your spouse about finances. Now, if you're a spouse who says, oh, we just never talk about finances, that's not interesting, he or she takes care of all of it. Well, I'm happy for you. I'm get, glad you get to be so childlike and not have to be responsible with your budget at all because it might be causing your spouse a lot of stress and they might feel like your mommy or daddy parenting you while you run around and do whatever you want. So man or woman up and go over your budget with your spouse. If you can get on the same page with finances, it's incredible the channels of communication that are opened up. Uh, the second thing, in-laws. Believe it or not, 
This is a cause of tension in a marriage. Men, nothing will break your wife's heart faster than you including your mother in all your marriage decisions. And in fact, you not including your wife, but including your mother in decisions. You make decisions with your family and she just is left out in the cold. That will destroy her self-esteem and her um, feeling validated in your relationship. Women, don't let your husband become the joke of your family. Um, if they make fun of him and joke about him, um, don't you participate in it. You stand with your spouse over uh, your extended family and his extended family. It will wound your spouse if you do not do this. Third thing, children. If you are somebody that has a burning desire to have children, do not marry someone who does not want them. Also, if you're somebody who already has kids and um, you're thinking of remarrying, if you are dead set that you do not want to have any more kids because you don't want to deal with the blended family drama, you need to make that really clear to your potential uh, partners that you're interested in that you are not going to have any more children because you may be looking at someone who really dreams about um, going through that whole process of having more kids or having kid children. And you guys got to be on the same page of that because somebody's going to lose a dream. Um, so that is something to keep in mind and be practical about. And the fourth thing is religion. Um, I know there's an idea that we can have incredible plur um, plurality, I think that's the word for it, in our beliefs. But a lot of times we believe something because we believe we are right in that. So if you are uh, Islamic, if you're Catholic, if you're Hindu, if you're atheist, you truly believe what you believe, obviously. And even though you say, oh, everything is fine, everything is cool with what everyone else believes, there is a part of you that believes you are right. Because truth is not relative, okay? It's not my truth, your truth. What we're all seeking is the truth. And if your spouse and you aren't on the same page with your faith, I think at some point it will cause friction, especially if you have children, okay? So when we have our children, we tend to gravitate towards what we believe. We believe it even more. And we want our children to believe it too because we believe we have found the truth. So if you are married to someone who is a totally different religion than you, this is going to cause a lot of tension in the household. And you're going to find yourself having conversations with your children that's going to say things like, well, daddy's not right about that, or mommy's not right about that. And it puts them in the middle. So again, these four areas, if you are looking to get married and you want a good marriage counselor, if they do not go over finances, in-laws, children, expectations for that, also expectations for how you're going to raise your children, and religion, those four areas, if they don't address on that at all, you need a better marriage counselor. These four areas are crucial to marriage success. Now, I haven't been married super long, um, but I will tell you that these four things definitely matter. You need to get on the same page with finances. You need to solidify your marriage with your spouse, even if it's at the expense of hurting feelings with the extended family. Um, you need to have a plan for what you want your goals for parenting are, if there are any goals for that. And faith is so important. That is who we are. It is our identity. We identify with what we believe. So four areas to work on in marriage, to improve on, or to plan on for when you do marry. And um, yeah, that's, that's it for this video. So go ahead and like it, share it, and um, or dislike it, leave a comment, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks, everybody. Bye.